Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Ollie's Zoo. It's been ages since I've done one of these videos. I've just been so busy with uni and uh, my uh, Python research. It's just been a crazy few months, so I've just not had time to do one of these. Um, but anyway, um, I had a really bit of a light bulb moment this morning and I thought, I'm going to do another Ollie's Zoo video today. <laughs> um, and I've uh, found a pretty cool thing to talk about today and that is uh, are reptiles smart or are reptiles dumb you know to turn that question around um, how much cognition do snakes and lizards and tortoises have um, you know that type of thing and uh, I think uh, something like this you'll find in the reptile community and the animal world that a lot of people um, you know you have either straight yes or straight no and you also get quite a few people sitting on the fence as well I think uh, with our re whether reptiles are smart or not uh, you know I, I would say the most obviously clever reptiles you know that are you know intelligent um, just at a glance that you can kind of think yeah they, they're thinking about some are uh, obviously crocodiles, crocodilians, alligators, gorials, caimans, that, that family of reptile Unfortunately, I don't have any crocodiles uh, at Ollie's Zoo, which is a shame. Uh, so we'll just be sticking to the small stuff today, um, all the residents that we have here at the zoo room, and uh, just trying to find out, are they clever? Um, now, uh, I think the, the problem is with trying to assess whether a reptile is intelligent enough, intelligent enough, is the fact that like they don't really do a lot. You know, as we know, as reptile keepers, as animal people, um, snakes, lizards, most of the time they just sit there and wait to be fed. Uh, you know, that is probably about the most intelligent thing that they do outside of mating rituals and mating behaviours that requires any sort of like um, decent amount of cognition and intelligence is actual feeding behaviour because they're having to think about, they're having to register a food item and then decide on the decision whether or not to eat it or not, you know, on, um, measuring out their currency and constraints and then making the decision whether or not to eat that food or not. Uh, that's probably the most intelligent thing that they do outside of mating. Some reptiles do have quite complex uh, courtship routines like the beardies, you know, as we've talked about before in the head bobbing video. Uh, so I, what I propose today is that we just visit a few of the residents at Ollie's Zoo, just see what they're up to for a minute and try and assess whether or not we think they're intelligent or not. Intelligent or not. <laughs> so let's do that. So we're at the uh, bearded dragon enclosure and uh, obviously here's a fat girl Caroline and uh, she's just having a bask right now. It is um, about dinner time here in the UK so the tanks have only been on for a few hours um, today so she's obviously just uh, enjoying that nice big heat lamp there thermoregulating her body temperature trying to warm up and again, that's probably like one of the more intelligent things that reptiles do. Obviously being cold-blooded animals, they don't thermoregulate their body temperatures like we do. So they have to seek out heat sources um, and use that heat source to bring up the temperature of their internal organs to a normal level uh, where they can you know, function properly and move around and be active. But I mean, other than just sitting there, she's not really doing much, is she? I mean, you know, she's eyeing the camera up just slightly tip tilting her head every so often. Doesn't look like there's a lot going on in there. But if we move over here. Where is he? There he is, this duffy boy. Again. He's pretty grey right now. So he's just thermoregulating. He'll be taking in a lot of nice heat. He's not really doing much, is he? He's just sitting there. I mean, if we came back later on in the day, Duffy's usually quite active normally. Uh, for a bearded dragon, I'd say he's probably quite clever. You know, he's always up and down being active, but that's mainly courtship is that. He's showing off to Caroline. He's showing her that this is his territory and he's the man in here with the dragon. <laughs> um, yeah, he's not really doing much. So I don't, I don't know about bearded dragons, I mean, you know, I've, in my years of working with them, in my experience, I've seen some quite clever beardies, uh, you know, that like know 
that's they poo in certain places they always without fail poo in the certain the same place which is a bit bizarre uh, but they must have a preference of somewhere where to defecate uh, you know and some of them have a preference of food as well some that some will take rat pups as a treat some just don't flat out like them so yeah you know they do have some intelligent qualities but right now they don't really seem to be doing much that's very clever at all so bye guys all right now we're going to get a little bit snaky and we've come down to the hognose tank somewhere that we've not been for quite a while because uh, i'd say these guys are by far more active than the pythons king and alfred i mean they just sit there you know they like to hide in their in their caves pretty shy creatures the royal pythons whereas the hognose is from because they're from the colubrid family um you know they're generally more active snakes in my opinion um they're always moving around and i don't know whether they're searching for food or not they might be just you know just generally moving around and you know exploring because it is quite a dense tank is this uh, i do move it around quite a lot the furniture in here and i think that is crash you can see just popping his head out of the cave there they get quite territorial sometimes to the hognose snakes they'll puff their hoods out like cobras which is a bit bizarre because there are no cobras that come from North America which is where the hognose snake comes from uh, and uh, you know like they, they'll kind of like spit at you almost like like a dummy strike kind of uh, but if you move a bit closer to him you might do something pretty cool see there we go he just hissed he just spat that's him saying get out of my territory or I'm gonna bite you I mean, I'm just your friend, Crash. Can you do it again? Look at him, he's proper puffing himself out. Not quite to the extent like what a cobra would do. Still. Try and get him to puff out a bit more. And also that sound that he's making that's that's not like a hiss the only snakes that truly hiss are actually cobras uh most snakes will just inflate and deflate the lungs and it sounds like a tire like when a tire is being like deflated it's like a sound so but with these guys it's like a quick sharp pssst, like that so yeah yeah he's pretty cool isn't he? it's pretty cool now is this intelligence that's the thing, is this intelligence or is that just an instinct that they have hardwired in their brain to say get out of my territory, I don't want nothing to do with you um, or I'm going to bite you, is it that type of thing, who knows, but yeah, there we go, hognose snakes. Now we're down with Maximus or Lepidotus and uh, this is a pretty cool example of uh, reptiles learning anyway. Um, in the last couple of weeks he seems to have uh, taught himself that uh, if he butts against the glass in the corner where his water, where his little pool is, um, then I'll let him out. Uh, so, uh, oh here he comes, is the maxi boy going to pop his head out? I don't know. I think tortoises are actually under underrated in terms of intelligence um, you know like with snakes and stuff they're highly instinctive creatures of snakes they eat, they mate uh, you know they defecate and that's it really they hunt for food lizards not much different really um, except that they have quite complex uh, courting, courting rituals and mating behaviours which obviously links in with the fact that reptiles and birds are related because birds obviously they have a ton of courtship babies whereas tortoises they will you know they have territories they will you know live in twos and threes in the case of leopard tortoises in the wild uh, they'll travel great distances every day to find food sometimes returning to the same places so you know they must have some degree of understanding where things are and navigating as well which again is pretty remarkable and it would make sense that tortoises could do this because obviously sea turtles you know from the ocean green sea turtles that type of thing they return to the same beach the same nesting grounds where they were born every year of their life until they die 
you know, and they can travel great distances in that year, uh, you know, like thousands of miles away from that one stretch of beach, and they have to know which stretch of beach that is, and they have to get back there. And I think that's pretty amazing. Uh, you know, so maybe tortoises have that sort of degree of intelligence as well. Uh, but who knows, you know, sometimes Max does some really dumb things like, you know, like walking along these rocks here and stuff and he'll just trip and fall over on his side and he'll like flap his legs in the air, you know, like, ah, help me. Uh, but uh, I think that's pretty cool. Like, as I say, he started bumping himself against the side of the tank when he wants out and then I'll let him out. So he's obviously sussing that when he performs a certain behavior, a uh, certain out outcome uh, comes from that, so yeah, there we go. Bit of a reptile cognition for you right there, guys. So we've taken a trip around the zoo room and uh, we've visited some of the residents who uh, I thought, you know, would make pretty interesting, uh, like sort of like examples of, uh, you know, basic reptile cognition. Uh, some of them were, some of them didn't. Uh, you know, you're not going to always get the best results when you're working with animals as I'm sure all the reptile keepers out there know all the animal lovers out there know when you're working with animals it's a whole different ball game <laughs> expect the unexpected you know so I mean in conclusion to this you know do I think that reptiles are in, do I think reptiles are intelligent at least small reptiles anyway and you know we're not talking about crocodiles or you know large monitor lizards, um, do I think small reptiles are intelligent that are kept in captivity mainly? I think the problem is the, the, what it boils down to, the crux of it all, is that you know we need to, science and you know research methods need to develop more uh, to discover new ways of testing intelligence in reptiles. You know it's all good and well as observing animals doing strange things but that is um, you know we're, we're looking at their behavior through our eyes and we're or in a way projecting our emotions onto those animals you know an animal might be uh, looking outside of the tank looking into the distance and you know butting themselves against the tank to try and get out like Max does and I interpret that as he wants out it might not be that might not be the case, that might not be what that means at all. Uh, and that's called anthropomorphism. Uh, you know, and we, uh, us as human beings and our animals, as much as we love our animals, we do tend to sort of project our emotions onto them quite often. Uh, you know, anthropomorph anthropomorphized animals. Uh, you know, classic examples of this are cats and dogs, for example. How, you know, we always say cats and dogs, you know, like, lovers and you know they love this and they love that toy and you know they love going out and you know they don't love anything you know it's an animal it doesn't think like a human does don't even get me started on anthropomorphism because this video will turn from a 10 minute video into a half hour long video <laughs> uh, you know so I think reptiles do fall victim to anthropomorphism because they're extremely um, non-emotive animals you know like you know, the behaviours are very, very discreet. Unlike mammalian species and bird species that exhibit really obvious behaviours, reptiles are so subtle in their behaviours. Uh, you've really got to know what you're looking for sometimes. Uh, and we do tend to make assumptions. So, um, But do I think reptiles are intelligent? Small reptiles are intelligent? Yes, I do. I just think it's a case of research and more scientific uh, you know, method uh, being developed um, and better ways of testing their intelligence and their cognitive abilities so that we can unlock these secrets, you know, these bits of knowledge um, and, you know, understanding once and for all just how reptiles do think um, and uh, that way, you know, we, we have a better grasp of what they need you know, their husbandry requirements, their dietary requirements and ultimately, that makes our job as keepers and animal lovers a lot easier and, you know, a lot more welfare based. So, yeah. What do you guys think? Do you think reptiles are intelligent? Let me know. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's been something a little bit different. Um, I apologise if the camera angles haven't been great. 
during the enclosure scenes. Um, the camera that I'm using isn't quite up to par at the moment. So yeah, hopefully I'll be back soon. Have a good day, guys.